Hi, I'm Doug Schmidt, the Director of Communications for Fifth Freedom, and this is all about ABLE accounts. And now I'd like to introduce my guest, Amy Corbin. Amy Corbin is the Executive Director for the Indiana ABLE Authority that oversees the InvestAble, InvestAble Indiana program. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for being here. <laughs> Absolutely. To start off, why are ABLE accounts so important? Well, this is an opportunity for individuals with disabilities to save money in an unprecedented, never before um, had way um, to save money for their disability related expenses and not risking a loss of their vital public benefits like Medicaid or SSI. Who is eligible to apply for an ABLE account? So to be eligible for an ABLE account, you must have the age of onset prior to 26. Mm -hmm. And if they're receiving SSI or SSDI, they're automatically eligible. If they're not receiving either of those two benefits, they may still be eligible if they can meet Social Security's definition of disability, um, which is outlined in either uh, Title II or 16 of the Social Security Act, or if they have a disability on the Social Security's list of compassionate allowances. Mm -hmm. And if they can um, then self finish that self-certification process by providing a doctor's written diagnosis of severe functional impairment. So uh, why, did, why did they select age 26 as the age of onset? Well, it seems kind of like an, a bit of an arbitrary number, but there is a, there is a federal scoring process, essentially, mm -hmm. that goes into um, determining how much it would cost to um, implement a program. And to implement mm -hmm. a program such as this, it did receive a rather high score. Um, so the age of 26 was chosen, and it's presumed that that is it was likely chosen because that's the age to which an individual can stay on their um, parents' insurance. Mm. So how can someone apply for an ABLE account? So to apply for an Investable Indiana account, they would go online to in.savewithable.com. Mm -hmm. There is a button there that they would click that says Start Saving, and they would um, be taken through a pretty simple three-step process to enroll. Um, there is a minimum of $25 that must be put into the account mm -hmm. upon starting it. And um, when they go into that enrollment process, they just need to make sure that they have certain information available, such as the account, uh, the beneficiaries, um, obviously their name, address, uh, date mm -hmm. of birth, social security number, and a personal bank account number if they did want to um, schedule direct contributions from their account, savings account into their ABLE account. So expenses from the ABLE account, uh, I noticed it said they could only be used for approved expenses. What does, it, what does that mean? So any approved expense, uh, it would be considered a QDE or Qualified Disability Expense. And mm -hmm. this is any expense that is related to that individual's disability and mm -hmm. living with a disability. And these Qualified Disability Expenses were intentionally very broadly defined to help mm -hmm. improve and enhance an individual's quality of life. Um, and so as long as it's the expense is related to the individual's disability mm -hmm. and can help um, maintain, improve, maintain or improve their independence, health, or quality of life, then it can be considered approved. So um, a lot of our members, they have issues with transportation, mm -hmm. you know, uh, affording transportation, public transport, transit. Could it be used for things like, like a bus pass or th things like that? Absolutely. Um, now, to start off with, well, I can't, I'm not, I'm not a legal or a tax professional. Oh, sure, so sure. if there are any questions that one would have about what a qualified a specific expense might be, a qualified expense might be, um, I would encourage them to speak to that legal or tax professional. Mm -hmm. But transportation expenses are allowed. So especially okay. if they're helping them get to appointments or maintaining their independence or helping mm -hmm. them get out there and socialize a little bit more, um, having that uh, having that ability so they're not at home and they're they're mm -hmm. you know having that freedom to to go and live their lives, um, even getting to medical appointments. I think I said uh, employment that sort of thing. So they could use it for bus fare, saving for a car, things like that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Modifications maybe to a car that they might need. Absolutely yes. Do the, do the expenses, do they have to be verified or do they have to have some sort of um, proof that these expenses are allowed? How do they how do, they do that? So Investable Indiana does not um, require that you verify what those expenses are. 
but on an annual basis, they will, um, re we will report to the Social Security Administration and the IRS mm -hmm. the date and the amount of the expenses. So we encourage individuals who are using the accounts to keep records on um, what their expenses were for, um, just mm -hmm. in case the IRS or the Social Security Administration would choose to audit that person's account. So what, what sort of expenses would fall under the basic living expenses category? So this is kind of a catch-all category because mm -hmm. we recognize and understand that no two persons, people, uh, circumstances are identical and each individual has unique needs. So this is, um, this is a category that could help, um, depending on the individual circumstances, mm -hmm. could possibly help cover um, basic expenses such as, um, well certainly housing is allowed for, mm -hmm. um, food, um, clothing if it was necessary um, given their, the means that are available to that person. Mm -hmm. um, as long as that expense occurred during the time that the individual was eligible for an ABLE account mm -hmm. and again is related to living with a disability and su supporting their quality of life, um, that basic living expense could be um, considered uh, qualified. So the, the ABLE accounts, the allowed expenses, seem to be very, very broad. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that you know of that definitely would not be allowed? So while the, the expense does not have to be for the exclusive and sole benefit of the beneficiary of mm -hmm. the Investable Indiana account, um, it does need to be related to their disability. So I've received questions about whether or not um, I can use the funds in my ABLE account to pay for my child's school clothing or mm -hmm. um, um, my child's back to school um, supplies, that sort of thing. That that would be um, a little more, I, again, I can't give sure, th that sure, sort of but advice, you would, you would but maybe I, would, I, I wouldn't see that being likely to be considered a qualified expense. Mm -hmm. um, I get a lot of questions about whether or not the funds in an ABLE account can be used to pay for a vacation, mm -hmm. um, especially if you've never been able to save for something like that. Again, just make sure that um, it's intended to improve and or enhance your health, independence, or quality mm -hmm. of life. Um, and and what, looking at the risks, your risk factors and the risk factors in going into the, um, paying for something like that, um, what your risk tolerance would be. Okay, so something like that, you wouldn't necessarily say it's not included, but you would advise caution maybe? Perhaps, yeah, I would advise caution. Because um, I could certainly see how paying for a, you know, a trip that you've never been able to take before, you've never been able to save for before, um, could improve your independence, your quality mm -hmm. of life, and your, your general well-being. Um, but we w we w I wouldn't want someone to incur um, a, a incur additional taxes or consequences mm -hmm. as a result as a result of that. So again, if um, if you have those sort of more specific questions mm -hmm. um, that might be a little more nuanced, then um, make sure you just get a get maybe a little more professional advice to. Okay. Um, to help answer that question. And one, one of the other qualified expenses for, from an ABLE account um, mm -hmm. is legal, um, oh, legal, ad, legal assistance or um, financial services, mm -hmm. like a, getting um, assistance with your taxes and that sort of thing. But sure. Uh, you mentioned people paying a little bit of extra taxes. Mm -hmm. Is that generally what happens if, if an expense is declared not approved? So if it was a non-qualified expense, they could incur additional state or federal taxes, mm -hmm. um, tax penalties if, it, if it's not approved. Um, so again, depending on what their uh, risk tolerance is, sure. um, maybe they don't mind paying that additional, um, that additional tax penalty, but um, it, yeah, if it were considered non-qualified, there would be additional tax penalties. Okay, so there's not gonna be a SWAT team kicking down no, their door. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So who can, who can contribute funds to an ABLE account? One of the beautiful things about an ABLE account is that anyone can contribute into the account. Um, so that's family, friends, other supports in that person's mm -hmm. lives. Um, with Investable Indiana, we've made um, gifting or contributing into an account very easy because we offer a U-Gift feature mm -hmm. that gives each uh, individual account owner a unique code, which they can put that code in an email or a birthday invitation or a graduation mm -hmm. invitation and say, 
help me meet my savings goals, help me mm. meet my future needs, um, mm -hmm. and give you know give to my ABLE account if you could please. Um, we c with Investable Indiana, we can even accept uh, employer contributions. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to direct deposit part of your check, your paycheck, mm -hmm. you can you can do so. And if an employer um, decided they would like to match funds going into your ABLE account, similar to uh, with a 401k, mm. they could decide to do that. That's cool. So it's pretty cool that um, our, our platform is unique enough that we have we have those features and mm -hmm. it um, increases the, um, I guess, kind of flexibility and usage, rather, mm -hmm. of, of the Investable Indiana account. Uh, how, how much can people contribute to someone else's ABLE account? So there is a minimum contribution amount uh, anytime there's a contribution of $25. Mm -hmm. um, annually, there can be up to $15,000 that can be put into that person's ABLE account, and that is from all contributing sources. Including the owner. Including the owner, yes. To the people watching at home, uh, what what could they do to help spread the word about this program? Well, if if you're on social media, share about Investable Indiana on social media. Um, if you work for or have a business that serves um, the population that Able is intending to serve, mm -hmm. um, share about the plan in a newsletter, or mm -hmm. um, if you. Or, or share it on your website. If you would like a presentation done uh, it for a small group, a mm -hmm. group of employees, that sort of thing, we'd be happy to get myself or, or someone else that is knowledgeable about um, Investable Indiana out there to, to present to your group. Does the, does the state have future plans for, for changes to the program or just the future of the ABLE program? What can we expect next? Well, um, certainly our primary goal is to get this incredible opportunity into the hands and lives of the people whom it, it intends to benefit. So increasing marketing and outreach efforts will certainly um, have a twofold benefit in that it will, I mean, not only pr promote the program and increase enrollment in the program, but I, the major benefit that I see is, again, making sure that it gets into the lives of the individuals that, that really need it. Um, we intend to reach out, to continue to reach out into um, the employer channels and to mm -hmm. help educate them and speak with them about Investable Indiana and explore what their roles might be in, in helping to make sure that their employees, um, their eligible employees, um, ha what their role is um, in helping to educate their potentially eligible employees uh, in utilizing Investable Indiana. So again, if that's um, having information, if they if they tend to employ um, individuals with, with disabilities, mm -hmm. um, to make sure that they're offering that information to them, um, and then I would really like to give additional financial education resources mm -hmm. to um, individuals with disabilities who are utilizing the Investable Indiana account, because if you've never had the I, if you've never had the opportunity to save money before, going mm -hmm. um, online in the enrollment process and choosing from the different investment options we have, it could be kind of um, overwhelming and you may not understand um, or, I mean, I, I know I, I could have difficulty understanding um, which options would I want to invest in mm -hmm. um, and put my money into. So making sure that they have those financial education tools to, to help them navigate through that process. Great, great. Uh, now you touched on you touched on employment a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, is an able account something that that people could use to help them find work? I, I could see that that could absolutely um, be considered because um, employment um, is considered a qualified e expense. So it, okay. in education. So if they needed that vocational training um, or um, just getting back out into the workforce, mm -hmm. um, if they're they need to purchase. Um, clothing to you know to go to an interview to mm -hmm. to um, be prof professional and presentable in an interview. Um, I think that that could certainly be considered qualified. I I, I don't you know I don't mm -hmm. want to speak to, too much because I, I don't want to say that something's qualified and have it not be qualified. Sure, but sure. I could, could see I can see the direct correlation of of the benefit for that individual in supporting their life and um, their independence and um, you know certainly getting into the workforce because. That makes sense. You don't want to work, you don't want to sit sit at home and not mm -hmm. necessarily do anything. The um, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of mm -hmm. 2017 allowed for individuals who have earned income 
-hmm. to contribute additional amounts into their ABLE account above that $15,000 um, annual limit. So if I'm working and I have that earned income, I can contribute um, either the lesser of the lesser of the following, and that's either the federal poverty limit mm -hmm. or my annual earned income. So um, I think the federal poverty limit for 2018 is, I think it's like, tw it was 12,070, I think it's $12,140. Okay. So I can contribute the lesser of the federal poverty income, a federal, federal poverty limit or my annual earned income into my ABLE account on top of that $15,000. So. Um, I think that's a pretty exciting um, opportunity that's given to individuals who are working. Definitely. Uh, was there anything else that, that you wanted to discuss or wanted to bring up? Well, I guess I would like to say um, that, I mean, this isn't a program that is just for individuals who have the means, who have the money to use mm -hmm. it. It isn't a program that's just for individuals who are working. Um, just as parents might want to start saving for their college, for their children's college, Mm -hmm. or future expenses from a young age, I'd encourage them to check out Investable Indiana to to help starting to help start saving for their child's future. Um, mm -hmm. An able account could you know possibly help cover future unforeseen expenses that um, you, you just don't expect. Like I said, un unforeseen expenses. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe even looking toward retirement age um, if someone needs to help supplement their retirement or. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned um, certainly um, home modifications or um, uh, even like saving for an accessible vehicle, mm -hmm. maybe non-traditional um, therapeutic services such as horseback riding, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the range of qualified expenses is very broad and perhaps it could be overwhelming to think about what I could use it for, but it's I, I encourage you not uh, to look at it as overwhelming. It's, you just finally have this opportunity that you've never had before, and um, you need to make your ABLE account work for you. And I encourage um, account owners to pull their supports in around them, whether that's their mm -hmm. family members, their friends, their community supports that they're working with, um, to say, help me paint my picture. Um, this is where I am now. This is where I'd like to be a year from now, or five mm -hmm. years from now, or 15 years from now. Um, and really, really make, um, start having that empowerment to make their own decisions for their current and future.